All right. So this afternoon, I'm going to be preaching on a subject. You call a little bit of that from the prayer and um, even some of the songs that we've been singing. You know, I love that song. Hallelujah. It is done. It just it, it, it sums up salvation so succinctly. Hey, praise God. It's done. What Jesus did for us, it's done. He bought it. He paid for it. We received it, right? Hallelujah, it's done. I believe on the Son. That's what it takes to be saved. It's good news. It's great news. It's simple. It's easy. And more importantly, it's what the Bible teaches from front to back. Over and over and over again. That is the resounding theme of the Bible. We're saved. It's done. It's over. It's bought. It's paid for. There's nothing we can do to achieve it. There's nothing we can do to earn it. We just have to humbly receive that free gift. But there are many people that hate God. There are many people who are wicked deceivers. There are many people who are deceived and deceivers. Who are going around perverting the gospel of Christ. And there is no end to all of the attacks that the devil will make on the gospel. He'll try to back in works, put works in here, over there, any possible way he can to mess people up on the simplicity which is in Christ. In the, the doctrine that I'm going to be preaching about today and covering and going over is what's known as millennial exclusion. There are some wicked heretics, false prophets out there that are teaching a doctrine, if you can believe this, that believers in Jesus Christ will spend time in the lake of fire or in hell. There are some variations in what people believe about this, but yeah, it's ridiculous. I see some of the looks on people's faces be like, what are you talking about? But in what it boils down to, and part of my title this morning is Baptist Purgatory. Because this isn't just the Catholics that are teaching you know, this, this concept of, of having your sins purged and, and people spending time in a bad place because they didn't live a good enough life. You know, there's a lot of other false religions that'll teach that type of stuff, but this has crept into Baptist churches. And even Baptist churches that are trying to associate themselves or trying to mimic or look very close to the right churches. Independent, fundamental Baptist churches that... that, uh, that you know, have good standards that are trying to be separated from the world that, that have this outward appearance that are King James only. Now they're bringing in these damnable heresies. And yes, they are damnable heresies. This isn't just they're wrong about something. They're a heretic about something. This is this is damnable heresies because what they're teaching just shows that they are not saved, that they don't actually believe the gospel. And the reason why we started off in 1 John chapter number 5 is this is a passage that I love to show people out soul winning. Because it's very clear, it's very evident that if you don't believe in eternal life, in eternal security, eternal means forever, by the way. It means it doesn't end. And we'll go over that a little bit later. The word E is a... Is a, is a the prefix of the word that means not. And turn is the root word that means end. It means literally means it doesn't end. So if you think of turn or like terminal, it's, it comes from a similar root or same root. And e turn means not ending. The same way that everlasting means it lasts forever. It continues on. So it's, it's basically saying everlasting means it's going to go forever. Eternal means there is no stopping point. It's two ways of saying the same exact concept, right? We believe that to be true because that's what God's word says. Because whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting, eternal. 1 John chapter 5, look down at verse Number 10, the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is true, I mean, this verse says it, but no matter what God, if God says something and you don't believe it, then what you're doing is you're calling God a liar. So if the Bible says something and you say, nope, I don't believe that, I don't think that's true, well, God's the one that said it, so that, I guess you're calling God a liar then. 
Very simply, if I were to say some, just tell you some fact, something about my life or about what I possess, what I own. I have, you know, five children. I have a, a white van. I, you know, whatever. If you say, yeah, I don't think you do. Or I, you, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't think you really do. What you're doing then is saying that I'm lying when I say that I have these things or I possess these things or I'm making a statement. You're calling me a liar by saying, no, I don't believe you. So when we say, well, I don't really believe salvation is eternal then we're making God a liar. And that's what this verse says. And here's what it says. It says, when you don't believe the record that God gave of his son, you're making God a liar. Well, what's the record? It tells us in the next verse, verse 11 says, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son. And like I said, I, I explain this so many times out soul winning to people who don't believe in eternal life to show them that they're not saved. Because many people think they're saved. They think, oh no, I'm saved, brother, I'm going to heaven. But I just disagree with you on eternal security. I just think that it is possible to lose your salvation. So I show them this because the Bible says very clearly there's three aspects that we have to believe in this one verse of the record that God gave of his son. One is he says he's given it to us. Given implies it's a gift. It's by grace. It's not earned. It's not merited. It's not deserved. It's given. Two, it's eternal life. Eternal means forever. By definition, it means forever. And three, it's through his son, Jesus Christ. That's the only way. It's through Jesus. There's not through any other God, any other idol, any other religion. It's through Jesus Christ alone. If you don't believe any one of those three things, you are not saved and you're calling God a liar.